and welcome to the Daily Space Weather. I'm your host, Dan, a.k.a. smash mash and we've got a coronal mass ejection imminent. It'll be in the earthly zone. Will it be earthly directed? Well, I kind of doubt it, but we are expecting one in on the Earth-facing portion of the solar disk. So that's something that we'll cover later in the video. First, we're going to look at some composite imagery here, such as this great SDO imagery. That's yesterday plus today. And the most exciting places to watch, as you may be able to tell, are the northwest and the southeastern limb. So some major sunspots up there. Here's the northwestern limb in 304 plus 171 angstroms. Likelihood of major solar flares also very high. As a result of that sunspot group there, that's sunspot 3098. Don't be surprised if you get an X-class flare from that. And we've got these groups in the southeast as well. Here's the SDO colorized magnetogram. And we see some additional umbral consolidation here. You can see some fields coming together there at the leading edge, the North Pole portion of Sunspot 3098. See that happening on the intensity gram also, and we'll show you some extreme close ups of that on the SDO continuum here when we get to sunspot analysis. First, let's look at volcanoes. Mount Abiko continues to erupt here, producing a 12,000 foot plume of volcanic ash. I think that's an uptick at Mount Abiko. Subunose Jima, flight level 060 there, 6,000 foot ash plume. Subunose Jima, 7,000 foot ash plume. Dakono exploding, 7,000 foot ash plume there, and Lake Topo, the Topo volcano there, some hot spots there, lots of seismic activity happening below there. So an uptick there in the amount of magmatic earthquakes happening at less than 30 kilometers depth under Lake Taupo in New Zealand. Strongest of that was a magnitude 4.2 on the morning of September 10th. So an uptick there at Taupo is it preparing to erupt? Let us know in the comments what you think. Nevado de Ruiz exploding in Colombia, flight level 200. It's a 20,000 foot ash plume. Similar size ash plume from Sage in Ecuador. Explosive activity continues there as well. Flight level 200. Flight level 140 over Ravenador as it explodes. And last but not least, Saban Kaya exploding. Flight level 270. Don't pull vault the caldera. Here's your 90 day bar graph showing seismic activity. A convenient little graph there from VolcanoDiscovery.com's website. And we've seen a rather significant uptick of earthquakes here around the Pacific Rim. Check out all those earthquakes, including at least one 4 plus magnitude at California. Largest quake of the past 24 was a 5.8 at, at American Samoa. We're just going to scroll up the list here. Let us know in the comments if you felt an earthquake. Likelihood of that a little higher than usual here. And remember, folks, any earthquake can be a foreshock. So occasionally you get a warning in the form of an earthquake for additional earthquakes. So the Mid-Atlantic Ridge saw a 5.1. Panama had a 5.2. South Sandwich Islands had a 5.1. So quite a few quakes there. Again, the largest was a 5.8 at American Samoa. Future vacation spot. We're planning a New Year's Eve celebration there one of these years. There you go. Santa Rosa, California had a 4.4 and a 4.3. Those occurred at 139 and 140 Universal Time just this morning on September 14th. Looks like Guam had a 5.5. There you go. There's the largest quake of the past 24, also occurring this morning at 5.08 Universal Time. A 5.8 at a 5.08 earthquake at a 5.8 magnitude at American Samoa. One of the farthest places west that you can go, it's just this side of the International Dateline, which makes it a great spot to do a New Year's Eve long weekend or something like that. Last but not least, a 5.2 in Nicaragua. That one coming in just about an hour or two before we did this stream. So next, looking at the wavelengths that we showed you the close-ups of earlier in the video. That's 304 plus 171 angstroms once again. And 
and the 10.7 centimeter radial flux has now come up to 154 solar flux units. And let's put that in context. There's the one year chart of the radial flux. We're seeing some higher lows and higher highs there. As solar cycle 25 continues to ramp up, I can assure you that we've got lots of solar cycle to go. We'll show you the magnetic data here momentarily. We also saw a recent pulse here in the solar wind, a, a big uptick in the solar wind density there and a field shift. We'll get to that in a moment. NOAA forecasting here for some geomagnetic unrest late in the day on Friday there. So September 16th, expecting some geomagnetic unrest. I'm not sure what it's from. And it looks like we had a CME strike here. So check it out. You should be able to see this in the Magnetosphere movie. This is the last four hours. You can see that uptick in pressure happening there caused by an uptick in the solar wind density and a field shift. Also, we are expecting another coronal mass ejection. We'll tell you why here momentarily. Anyway, that's the last four hours of Earth's magnetic moment from space. A little uptick in magnetohydrodynamic pressure happening there. Here's Earth's magnetic moment from the ground. The scale here, nano Tesla. And you see a little bit of a change there in Earth's B field as a result of induced electricity. Geospace Delta B changes to Earth's B field. That's the last four hours of Earth's magnetic moment from the ground. And let's look at more geomagnetism. There is the KP index now at 2. KP2, the planetary K index, that's a measurement of global geomagnetism. So check it out. We just saw this uptick here in the solar wind density, making it all the way up to about 45 protons per cubic centimeter. Looks like a CME strike, as I think it's too early for the coronal hole wind stream to be showing up. Also a big shift in the magnetic fields there. The field's going all the way up to 11. So a bit of a shift there, not enough to cause any geomagnetic unrest conditions. The density has dropped down a bit. Solar wind now about 309 kilometers per second. Solar wind density about 23. Closer to 24 protons per cubic centimeter. Also, you'd notice that there is an uptick there in the plasma temperature. That's the bottom pane. And let's take a look at some magnetic data. There's the GOES magnetometers, and those are diverging here at the moment. Just coming off of midnight local time for the GOES-17. That's what this M stands for. That's midnight local time for the GOES-17. And looking at the heliospheric current sheet, Earth remains in a south pole current sheet. Nothing new going on there. No changes expected at the moment for the polarity of the current sheet. South pole shown in red, north pole shown in green. And let's take a look at the line of sight field plot. And let's move to coronal holes. Again, I don't think that uptick in the solar wind density was from a coronal hole, so the last, the other choice would be a coronal mass ejection. So by process of deduction, I think that uptick in the solar wind density was a CME strike. So there's your coronal hole line of sight plot. We've got south pole oriented coronal holes here mostly although some north ones there also in the southern portion there. So a little bit of a mixture there of coronal holes showing up. Let's take a look at it from SDO's perspective in 211 angstroms. Again, I think it's too early to see a high-speed stream from that well-defined coronal hole in the north, so let's move to sunspots. Likelihood of major flares very high as sunspot 3098 approaches the northwestern limb. There you go, 3098. As it sets and approaches the limb, its likelihood of producing major flares goes up. So don't be surprised to see an X-class flare from that. Likelihood of major flares really high, just about as high as it gets. So here's the SDO intensity gram, the SDO continuum imagery. We're going to zoom in a little bit there. We'll also show the magnetogram and some extreme close-ups. 
Here's SDO's magnetogram. And check out the spectacular imagery we've got here. See that a little bit of umbral consolidation happening there in those leading North Pole umbrae. Here's the southeastern limb. Lots of magnetically complex sunspots here on the Earth-facing portion of the solar disk and some filaments that we expect to erupt. So we're getting to the CME forecast here. First, the solar flaring report. There's the last three days. And the X-ray profile has gone up here in the past week a little bit. There's the, there's the seven day graph from the GOES X ray, the GOES X ray flux from the GOES 16 and GOES 17. And here's 94 angstroms, one of the best wavelengths to view X rays, to view solar flares, rather. It's not actually viewing X rays, by the way. That's 94 angstroms is part of the ultraviolet spectrum. 94 angstroms represents one of the ionized species of iron. That's hot iron gas. Don't listen to blowhards talking out of their ass about it because we cover facts on the channel. It's the most in-depth space weather and the most detailed imagery of the sun you'll see anywhere in the world. We saw a proton event happen here. So this is interesting. We saw a little proton event happen. It looks like it's, it's actually starting to wane and it caused a little bit of polar radio blackouts. And if you want to follow that yourself, go to the Space Weather Prediction Center and go to the D Region Absorption Predictions, or DRAP. It's going to show you the likely areas to see radio, radio blackouts and brownouts. And you can see a little bit of attenuation happening there around the poles. That's solar protons showing up and modulating the ionosphere, causing radio signals to fly off into space instead of being refracted back down to their earthly targets. Again, that proton event looks like it's waning now as those relativistic solar particles <clears throat> circulate around in Earth's field-aligned currents. And let's show a star chart here. We always like to know what's going on overhead, so we use in-the-sky.org to create our star charts. We're located in Lehigh Valley, Pennsylvania. And Venus just rising there over the horizon where we're located. Also Mars, the Moon, and Jupiter up there on the ecliptic. That's the yellow line. The blue line is the galactic plane. Let's do a solar system forecast. Here's the current state of affairs in the solar system. We've got a gibbous waning moon. Let's advance this one week. Keep in mind, this diagram is not to scale. There's where things will be in a week. We will have a crescent waning moon by then. Oh my God, the sun, Mercury, the Earth, and Jupiter are all lined up. Oh dear God, dear God, oh my God, it's going to do a heaping helping of nothing. And let's look at some coronagraphs here. Here's yesterday's coronagraph imagery. That's 84 frames worth. And some minor CMEs happening there. They don't look like they're, they're earthly directed. Here's today's coronagraph imagery. And we're also going to show you some images from Stereo A. Unfortunately, the data is lacking there. Stereo A located here at Lagrange 5 and the Soho Lasco C3 located here at Lagrange 1. And again, unfortunately, the data is lacking there. We've only got until 2 o'clock this morning for today, so not a lot to show there, although it does show Venus. So it looks like coast is still clear. And let's show the last 24 here in composite. SDO 304 angstroms ionized helium plus the Soho Lasco C2 and Soho Lasco C3. So 
Again, some minor CMEs there. They do not appear to be earthly directed. Let's talk about why we're expecting a CME that is in the earthly vicinity. It has to do with, well, this filament right here. I believe this filament is becoming unstable. So especially if we see a major flare from this sunspot, which is becoming more and more likely, this filament could indeed be ejected. Could the filament cause the coronal mass ejection? Could the filament cause the flare? We're not exactly sure about that, but some possibility that coronal mass ejections cause flares and not vice versa. It's distinctly possible. But I think this is the filament to watch. We'll be streaming it live today on the GO-16 SUVI. So we've also brought up the thematic map here. And it's not really showing the filaments very well. You can see a little filament there showing up on the thematic map. Here's the GO-16 SUVI, and it's going to show up a little better on that. We did an extended stream of this yesterday on twitch.tv slash smashamash. We'll be doing it again today. This filament here. Let's keep an eye on that one. Also, some major prominences here all around the east, the north, and the northwest. So before we get the bonus features, here is some more composite imagery. This is 1700 angstroms plus 335. And we're about to go to bonus features. Let's first pause for station identification. Thanks for tuning in to the Smash News Network, least busted name and news. If you'd like to support the channel, please consider do so by becoming a member of the Smash Team. Smashamash.com slash Smash Team is the URL. And we put up posts that nobody else gets to see. Often we put links on the Twitter page. If you'd like to support the channel via subscription membership, become a member at the gold or silver Smash Team level. You can also find links to our social media like Twitter, Instagram, Twitch, PayPal, Patreon, a, per a permanent invite link to our Discord chat there on the, on the smashamash.com slash Smash Team page as well as on the home page. There's also a bronze membership for those of you unwilling or unable to support the channel monetarily. You'll get things like email alerts when disasters happen at smashamash.com slash smash team. So visit our homepage, support us with clicks, and welcome to the Neo Renaissance. Yes, we are still in the process of composing a paper to explain plausibly the solar sunspot and solar polar field reversal cycles. Gold Smash Team members were already informed of what the mechanism likely is. Smashamash.com is the homepage. And if you want to support your own health, click on the SureMed link there or below this video. SureMed, a membership to the American Better Health Organization. It also opens you up to purchasing certain group insurances that are only available to SureMed members. For example, if you buy the plus, the plus membership instead of the base membership, you get accident insurance. If you buy the premier membership, you get critical illness insurance included as well. So again, check the links out there. Support your health with things like doctors by phone, virtual veterinarians, dental discounts, and lots more. This is not insurance. It's an association membership. Again, links below the video to that. And if you're not following us on Twitter, make sure you do so. If you don't have an account, create an account over on Twitter. Twitter.com slash smashamash. You'll see shares and things that you don't see elsewhere. Thanks to everybody who's been interacting over there on Twitter. Even those of you who've been talking out your you-know-what, it's still fascinating, and I don't know why people are such argumentative pricks lately on social media, but there seems to be a pattern emerging. Again, we'll be streaming later today the Go16 SUVI imagery on the Twitch feed, twitch.tv slash smashomash. You can also find links to our merch shop below the video, our sweet merch shop there in order of a best-selling are you surprised that's the order of best-selling? In any case, today's featured product is Universum Liberate. Now, I'm personally wearing the product. I'm also wearing the Mensa hat because part of the reason we make these videos is to make Earth not suck again. If you've noticed Earth's been sucking, well, there seems to be consensus there. And remember, folks, science is not a consensus. So the message of freedom of the freedom and liberty 
from the Galactic Federation Special Forces is indeed Universum Liberate. One of the mottos here at smashomash.com, the Smash News Network, least busted name in news. If I could wave my magic wand, I'd set everybody free. Unfortunately, we're unable to do that. However, we are able to promote the Galactic Federation Special Forces. So if you're so done with bringing freedom and liberty to your hometown, your state, your region, your nation, your continent, hemisphere, planet, solar system, bring it to the galaxy. Is the interstellar environment not what you'd like it to be? Do you believe nonsense about the interstellar environment? Well, I would like to set you free from nonsense. Remember, folks, the enduring feature of all cults is the belief in nonsense. I don't think all cults are harmful. I think some of them are maybe even beneficial. But nonetheless, in order to be in a cult, you need to believe nonsense. And here at the Smash News Network, least busted name in news, we have no interest in that whatsoever. Not being a cultist nor a cult leader, so please don't believe nonsense. Please believe facts. And hey, thanks for tuning into the YouTube channel, by the way. If you're viewing on BitChute, make sure you go subscribe over on YouTube. You're missing a lot of the content. And thanks to our YouTube subscribers. Make sure you check our playlists if you haven't. There are all kinds of videos besides space weather meteorology content. There are original music videos. There is product review content. Smashamash.org presents the sun. And if you're new to the channel, press like, press subscribe, press share, leave a comment. Tell us how you found the channel. Tell us where you're from. Tell us that you felt an earthquake, etc. And once again, thanks to our Smash team members smashomash.com slash smash team be a producer of the videos by becoming a member of the smash team so we've got some bonus features here and we've got significant internal charging hazards here satellites experiencing internal charging by high energy electrons getting inside of their circuitry over a large portion of the indian ocean oceania and the pacific ocean also some surface charging there over mexico and the Central Pacific. We're also seeing some breakdowns of data. We'll get to it. There's the GOES electron flux over the past three days. A little dip in the electron flux as we see that likely coronal mass ejection strike that we covered earlier in the video. And NOAA forecasting a downtick here. Electron storm continues though. Uh, we got to about four times warning levels yesterday. Not nearly as high as we got about a week ago, though. We got all the way to about 22 times warning levels. Anyway, there's the NOAA forecast for relativistic electrons. There's the one-year chart to put it in context. We just saw the highest levels that we've seen all year in the greater than 2 mega electron volt electron fluence. So let's take a look at the ionosphere, which is full of high-frequency anomalies. Let me reload that. And the F layer of the ionosphere is located at about 300 kilometers of altitude. Here is the F layer of the ionosphere. Massive low frequency anomalies happening, especially south of the equator, especially around South America. We'll let the ionogram play through, pause it on the latest image, and show the anomaly gram, which is full of blue. So here's the anomaly gram, and check out those huge high-frequency anomaly zones there in the southern Atlantic, southern Pacific, southern portion of South America, and the Antarctican region, also uh, Oceania there, the southern Indian Ocean, tons of low-frequency anomaly, uh, tons of high-frequency anomalies, and some rapid swings from high to low-frequency anomaly happening in the Pacific Ocean. Huge ionospheric anomalies here. That's anomaly in megahertz, anomaly in megahertz from the 30-day median. So there's the latest image. That's 10 o'clock universal time. And some high-frequency anomalies in the Arctic there as well. So tons of anomalies there in the ionosphere. Let's take a look at the total electron content forecast, which has been lacking data here. I'm going to press refresh on that and see if it's see if it's fixed and indeed it's not 
No idea where the likely GPS errors will be today. That's all the data we've got for you on the total electron content forecast. So here is the latest intensity gram and latest colorized magnetogram. Let's take a look at the magnetic fields of sunspot 3098. Yowzers. That is beta gamma class, beta gamma delta class. That is certainly capable of producing an X-class flare, especially as it approaches the limb. Let's zoom out and take a look at this sunspot. Pretty huge. And there's the full disk view. And we'll bring up one more series of composite images this is iron star. Three different species of ionized iron. 335, 193 plus 94 angstroms. That's the data from yesterday and today from SDO. Now we're going to do meteorology. Let's blast through some meteorology information as well. We want the videos to be as rich and chock full of facts as we could possibly make them. So here are the jet streams of the eastern world. Powerful anticyclone here over northern Australia. The counterclockwise rotation there associated with high pressure systems. Likely clear skies over that portion of the island nation. Here are the surface winds of this side of the planet. And this, this typhoon making landfall here. We saw winds showing uh, the warning of 150 plus miles per hour there, so that's going to be causing some damage there. Suboptimal for some major ports like Shanghai. Here are the surface winds of the Americas, the Western world. As this low continues to loiter off in between the Azores and uh, Newfoundland. Huge low there in the North Atlantic. Here are the jet streams of the Western world. Here are the jet streams of the Central world. Blowing backwards over the Indian Ocean there and portions of Africa. Here are the surface winds of Europe, Africa, and the Middle East. And continuing on, here's your weather.gov map. If your county's lit, click your county. I don't even, what are those? It doesn't even show that color. Let's press refresh and see what happens. Nope. High surf advisory? I don't, I don't know. Anyway, if your county's lit, click your county. At weather.gov, some flooding there forecasted for Washington, Nevada, parts of Utah, and parts of Arizona. So let's take a look at the total accumulated precipitation forecast here based on the GFS model. That's 72 hours of total accumulated precipitation in inches. And some heavy rains forecasted there for Nevada, up to four, four inches maybe. And some portions there, some localized spots of four inches likely. And let's move on to our pressure maps. There is the a pressure map of this area. And let's just take a look at this pressure as this makes landfall here. Nine seventy three. It looks like it might have lost some strength. Let's take a look at the winds. I believe it is losing a little bit of power there. Let's check gusts. Eeks. So clearly one hundred and eight, one hundred plus mile per hour gusts there. And there are a lot of ports in that area, uh, and those inlets. Those will experience some major storm surge, most likely. And let's continue on. Here's your NASA GOES lightning mapper. Quite a bit of lightning there around the Bahamas. The entire Western Caribbean, Central America. And the Western U.S. seeing quite a bit of lightning here. Let's check our real-time lightning map to see if we have any active cells at the moment. Got 
some active cells here in eastern Washington, it looks like. Rock Creek Recreation Site there, seeing some thunder roll again. Minor little thunder shower happening there. If you're wondering what the site is, it's a real-time lightning map from lightningmaps.org. Next time you hear thunder, check it out. Frighten the natives. Frighten the natives by forecasting thunder. Maybe look like a horror movie character by saying something foreboding just before thunder occurs. That'll impress, impress your friends and frighten your foes. So finally, the precipitation is starting to subside in southern Alaska there. That's a U.S. Doppler radar map. We'll focus on the lower 48 here. And let's pause more one, one more time for station identification. I just want to make sure the other maps are good to go. And indeed, we are good. Here's your shortwave radiation map showing clouds and fog. We're able to see clouds and fog because water vapor emits radiation in the infrared band. And here is the water vapor map. This shows all the water vapor, not just clouds and fog, but even water that is not condensed onto clouds. Remember, folks, fog is actually considered precipitation. So that's one of the things that you know, a lot of people don't consider. Precipitation is what happens when dew point is reached, when the relative humidity reaches 100%. Precipitation is rain, sleet, snow, and fog. That's it. Here's your recap. U.S. Doppler radar. Some heavy rains there moving into Utah. Here's your shortwave radiation map. 3.9 nanometers showing clouds and fog. And there is your water vapor map. Thanks for tuning into the Smash News Network, least busted name in news. I've been your host, Dan, a.k.a. Smash and Mash, inviting you to Mensa, make Earth not suck again. And while doing so, may that solar wind be at your back.